Hey there, everybody. I'm Angela Sharp, and welcome to The Daily Mix. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, enjoyed some time out and about, and I took in two ambush games, so it was a lot of fun. But I know everybody's been talking about the Oscars, right? Well, here's the only recap you really need to know. Bohemian Rhapsody brought home four Oscars, including Best Actor for Malik, and Green Book walked away with Best Picture. And while Bradley Cooper's A Star Is Born didn't win any of the awards it was up for, the internet was a buzz over the live performance he and his co-star Lady Gaga gave. Now I'm serious, everybody, everybody was talking about this. If you would have scrolled through Twitter or Facebook, people were talking about how in love they were and how they wanted them to kiss. And I just roll my eyes, you guys. Now I know that Lady Gaga recently broke up with her fiance, so that means obviously she's in love. And I honestly think Lady Gaga might be in love, but Bradley Cooper is an actor. He also has a four-year girlfriend and a kid with that same girlfriend. So that's not happening. You need to let it go. Now it wasn't that long ago that we were talking about Paylessy. That was that fake luxury shoe store, the Payless shoe store, like kind of made. Now what they did was they invited all these social influencers around and those guys talked about how much money they would pay for those shoes, right? And they were saying ridiculous high prices. Well, they used those testimonials on a commercial, but it looks like that media campaign didn't actually work, unfortunately, because we have now found out that Payless shoe stores are all going out of business. Many of them are gonna go out by March. A lot of them are gonna go out by May. But it's kind of sad because it was such a great marketing plan. If they would have used it a little bit earlier, hey, it might have actually worked. So you can definitely check out those Payless shoe stores. Now, if you're wondering what is going on with this table right here, and I'm sure you are, it's Holly Berry catering. Usually I don't have food attempting me to eat it during the show, but today I do because I'm gonna have my friends joining me today talking about Holly Berry catering and how they can help you plan a very specific, maybe engagement, wedding, whatever event you have, and they're gonna tell me about all the food they have here. So let's get started on today's Daily Mix. Now it's time to stock up on mask and colorful beads because of this weekend is all about SDL Mardi Gras. Now I'm telling you, if you haven't been to Mardi Gras here, you really haven't experienced St. Louis. The Lou is home to the second largest Mardi Gras celebration in the nation. That's right after New Orleans. Now you've got to have all your weekend festivities covered and I got you covered. Now to kick off Mardi Gras weekend, the annual Mayor's Ball Mardi Gras is taking place this Friday. Come party in a style and network with St. Louis's top professionals at the Elegant Gala. Expect to enjoy fine cuisine, cocktails, live entertainment, dancing, and more. Now this is also a charitable event and all of the proceeds benefit the Soulard and downtown communities. Alive and the Riverfront Times call it the social event of the season. You can dress to impress for the event this Friday, March 1st, from seven to midnight at the Rotunda in St. Louis City Hall downtown. Now the main event is Mardi Gras in Soulard. Every year, over two million people flood the streets of Soulard for an all day party. You can enjoy a wide variety of food, drinks, live entertainment, DJs, and specialty party tents for an additional cost. Now it wouldn't be a festival without the annual Bud Light Grand Parade. The parade kicks off at 11 a.m. and it goes till two, starting from Bush Stadium downtown and goes all the way through Soulard and ending in Anheuser-Busch Brewery. You can come experience the theme of 40 years of magic, music, and memories. All the fun takes place this Saturday, March 2nd, in the Soulard neighborhood. Now, if you're really looking for something to do after the parade wraps up, then you can always head on over to the Blues Alumni Party Tent and mingle with some of the best who ever played for the St. Louis Blues. We're talking about Barry Jackman, Cam Jansen, Brett Hall, Bernie Federko, Kelly Chase, Reed Lowe, Jim Camel, and Larry Patey. Now, I gotta tell you, I worked there 
for a lot of years, as you guys know, and I worked with all of those guys individually. They will tell you story after story, and those stories get better and better as the drinking continues. So uh, that's always a great time. Now, a party tent pass will get you a front row view and that Bud Light Grand Parade. It will also get you a lunch buffet, an open bar, and of course, like I said, story time with those blues legends. Now, even if you don't have a tent pass, you are welcome to join in all the fun and festivities taking place outside of the tent. For more information and details on all of the signature Mardi Gras events, visit MardiGrasInc.com. Now, do you want to celebrate Mardi Gras, but big crowds really aren't your thing? Cardinals Nation is hosting a Mardi Gras themed brunch that's family friendly and at an affordable cost. Also, children ages three and under are absolutely free. Now, brunch includes a delicious menu, free admission to the Cardinals Museum, and one complimentary mimosa or Bloody Mary for those people of age. Bottomless mimosas and Bloody Marys are also offered. This is a great alternative way to celebrate Mardi Gras. The Cardinals Nation Mardi Gras Brunch is happening this Sunday, March 3rd at Cardinals Nation at Bush Stadium. You can find out more details at cardinalsnation.com. Cinema St. Louis and the St. Louis Science Center are pairing up again for the second edition of their science fiction and fantasy short film contest. Filmmakers can submit their science fiction or fantasy shorts with a running time of five minutes or less for a chance to win prizes and more. Now the top three films will win a cash award for best of best, best science, sci-fi, and best fantasy and will be featured at the Science Center's first Friday movie, Magic in May. Now the shorts that aren't chosen for the top three prizes may still be selected to be screened for other first Friday events. Cinema St. Louis will also be considering entries for the St. Louis Filmmaker Showcase in July and the St. Louis International Film Festival in November. Entries are due by March 31st. You can find out all the details at cinemastlouis.org. You guys, mascot games are almost here. Do you want to see some of your favorite mascots take each other on in a game of soccer? I know you do. We are talking about Louie, Fredbird, Bushwhacker, the Billikin, and all your other favorite mascots. Now, they are going to be going head-to-head -head in the most hysterical soccer match of the season. The St. Louis Ambush take on the Milwaukee Wave March 3rd, and at halftime, that's the special treat, with more than 20 mascots competing in a halftime soccer match. Now, of course, these mascots will be running around during the game as well, causing giddy excitement for the whole family. For tickets and to keep up with your St. Louis Ambush, stlambush.com. During the first week of March, the St. Louis Municipal Court will be offering a warrant amnesty program. During that time, Municipal Court will be forgiving outstanding warrants for all violations except DUI, leaving the scene of an accident, and prostitution. Participants will not be arrested in court during this time, and they can resolve their outstanding payments and warrants without penalty. The amnesty program will take place at the St. Louis City Municipal Court from Monday, March 4th through Wednesday, March 6th. You can find out more information and check your warrant status online at municourt.net. Now, ever wish you could go back in time and see some of your favorite movies on the big screen? Well, you can. Retro movies will be airing at select Marcus Theater locations this spring, and these retro movies can be seen at retro prices. The retro movies will air Sundays at noon and Mondays and Tuesdays at 7 throughout March. Princess Bride is up first, March 3rd, 4th, and 6th, followed by my favorite movie of all time, Back to the Future, then The Sandlot, and Top Gun. For tickets and to find a theater closest to you, check out the retro series at MarcusTheater.com. Now, a local man is headed to the White House. He went there last week to have dinner with President Trump. According to Fox 2, Henry Davis joined other black conservatives from around the country to celebrate Black History Month. Davis is the founder and president of the Conservative Urban Project. That's an organization that is dedicated to revitalizing neglected urban communities in St. Louis. Now, they focus on rebuilding properties as well as bringing jobs and hope and pride to the residents of those communities. You can learn more by checking them out at cupinc.net. Now, the St. Louis Blues have finally hit a stride on the ice, but can they clean up at the casino? Well, you can find out this Wednesday at the St. Louis Blues Casino Night. 
It's night at the Oscars. Guests are encouraged to dress up as their favorite movie character for a fun night playing casino games with some of their favorite blues players. The 12th annual Casino Night will again be raising money for Blues for Kids. That's the charitable trust of the St. Louis Blues. So far, Blues for Kids has contributed more than $5 million to the St. Louis community. Blues Casino Night will transform the Enterprise Center into the Oscars, complete with live music, live and silent auctions, wonderful food options, an open bar, and of course, those games dealt by your favorite blues players. Casino Night is February 27th. For ticket information, visit stlouisblues.com slash casino night. Now, do you want to know what the hook gonna be? Yeah, I probably shouldn't rap, but you know who should? Murphy Lee. St. Louis rapper Murphy Lee will be returning home March 24th for a concert in East St. Louis. And he is bringing with him another local artist, Fresco Kane. Fresco Kane is actually a friend of the show. He was here with me on the Daily Mix not that long ago. Now they're billing this at the, as the biggest Aries party. The Zodiac Aries runs from March 24th through April 19th, but you don't have to be an Aries to attend. The concert is Sunday, March 24th at Visions Ultra Bar in East St. Louis. You can grab your tickets now. Just search the biggest Aries Day Party on Facebook or Eventbrite. The Hardy's 19th annual Rise and Shine for Heat event was a huge success. The HeatUpStLouis.org fundraiser hit a record high of more than $570,000 in donations. That's a 90% increase over their goal of $300,000. Even with the threat of a huge winter storm, hundreds of volunteers and even more diners came out to the 55 Missouri and Illinois Hardy locations to help heat up St. Louis. And check it out, members of the STL family came out to help gather donations for this amazing event too. It's very nice, I love it. Now next year's event is already in the works, so if you'd like to learn more about the Rise and Shine for Heat or other ways to help heat up St. Louis, go to heatupstlouis.org. And as if that wasn't enough to help show you how generous our great city is, Guns and Hoses also recently hit their record donation from their annual boxing event that was held this past November. The 32nd annual Budweiser Guns and Hoses boxing event raised $800,000 for Backstoppers. That's the nonprofit that helps families of the first responders who have lost their lives or been severely injured in the line of duty. That tops the record that was set last year of $700,000. To date, more than 7.6 million have been raised through this popular event to benefit the Backstoppers. How great is that? Now you can learn more about both the organization and Backstoppers at stlgunsandhoses.com. And St. Louis native Derek Scott will be competing in the finals of Dwayne The Rock Johnson's The Titan Games. That's this Thursday. Now last week he beat out his competitor in the Lunar Challenge during the semifinals. He's an attorney by day and a professional MMA fighter by night. He's kind of a scary guy right now. Scott was raised by gymnast and won his first national gymnastics championship at the age of seven. You can watch him in action on the season finale of the Titan Games this Thursday, February 28th at 7 p.m. on NBC, which is pretty exciting for him that we'll be able to check him out and see what he does. And what's exciting for me is we finally get to talk about this delicious food that I can smell the whole time we're talking and has been tempting me all day. I love it. I've got Holly and Erin with me from Holly Berry Catering. Well, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for inviting us. Okay, so you've got some great food here, but let's talk a little bit about the catering business that you have. How long has this been going? So we've had the catering business for over 20 years. This is actually our 20th year wow. that we're celebrating, so we're very excited about that. Yeah, And Aaron's awesome. been with me almost half of that time, almost 10 years, so. That is amazing. So how do you and Aaron work together? So we collaborate a lot. So she is in charge of all of the events. She's the director of the events. So whether that's talking about menus or ideas or trends or anything like that, we get to talk and are thankfully now our desks are closed. They didn't used to be. So we get to talk even more now. <laughs> well, I love that. Well, tell us some of the trends because I know I have to tell you, I have so many friends who got engaged mm -hmm. over yeah. the holidays and Valentine's Day. I'm going to be going to a lot of weddings. What are some of the trends in the catering world? Yeah, so I'll talk about a little bit, and then I'll let Erin tell you a little bit about the food that we're kind of representing those trends. Yeah. Um, some of the fun things that we've seen, as you probably look, whether it's Pinterest or whether it's magazines, you see this sort of, you see this continual rustic kind of community feel, whether it's a barn wedding or the farm tables or something like that, where people are kind of sitting and enjoying each other even more. And the food to reflect that is really important. So if someone comes to us with that idea, we really try and help them come up with a creative menu to highlight that. So 
So whether it's kind of a fun spin on things, um, this is kind of that area that shows you that. So Erin, do you want to explain kind of the food that represents this, the family style kind of community type event? Yeah. Absolutely. So um, what we have here highlighted on the wooden board, which is very trendy right now, everybody really loves this rustic warm feel that you get from everything being mm -hmm. highlighted on wood. Um, so we have our Greek salad kebab um, here first. Um, this is an excellent menu item in the summertime. It cools you down when it's hot. Um, everybody loves those patios, so um, it's a great thing to offer, you know, past and, you know, on a station as well. Um, we've got our bacon, pimento, cheese, and phyllo cup. Uh, pimento is a really um, fun, uh, granted southern, but is super popular right now. Yep. And this is a great way to feature it. Um, it's warm and crispy and goes great with Chardonnay. Um, so it's definitely something that you, um, you know, would love to put on your menu. Um, and then last but not least, we have the pork tostada. Um, this item is amazing. It's a burst of flavor in your mouth. Um, it highlights all sorts of, um, you know, warm, summery notes uh, with lime, and um, it's got a little kick from enchilada sauce in it, so it's a really, really great option. Um, and um, definitely is something that, you know, is just brings the warmth together, which is the feel that we get from the family style event. I love it. You, you guys mentioned family style, and we talked a little bit about off camera, but for somebody who doesn't know, that's kind of when people are kind of sitting at one of those long tables and right. they're sharing. They're all kind of sharing. Just like you'd be mm -hmm. sitting at your dinner table. And so it kind of, it's kind of forced interaction. You know, have you ever been at one of those events and it's sort of like you have the one person you sit next to and that's all you talk to. It really, you're passing the food. You know, this is an example like um, of, of a past side, um, whether it's a salad or, you know, so a green salad or mac and cheese. So you're actually, hey, can I help you? You know, you're kind right. of interacting, which makes it really special. And the other thing that's, I don't know if you'd call this a trend, I think it's going to be with us forever. And that is that everybody sort of wants to build their own because they have their own dietary needs. There's a and lot so, of that going yeah, on right now. Is. You might be allergic to something, right. or whatever. And so that allows that family style or whether even if it's a station type of event, small place, it allows you to let your guests pick what works for them. So we have good signage and things like that to help them out. Well, I love that. All right, now the salad you guys have here looks beautiful. It's our best salad. And you, salad you had there. mentioned that it was, mm -hmm. what, what is in the salad? Salad chef. Um, so this salad is amazing. It is my favorite. So it is. it features our house-made sugar nuts, mm -hmm. um, feta cheese. So wait, you actually make the nuts? We yeah. make the nuts in-house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we have a baker who's been with us for also a very long time, yeah. probably eight years. She makes them by hand. Mm -hmm. um, so feta cheese, uh, strawberries, and grapes. Um, and it's just on a bed of spring mix, and it's paired with our mango chardonnay vinaigrette, which is um, unparalleled. Yeah, it's like so the good. best dressing on the planet. <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> now, we were talking about mm -hmm. the dessert, which is my favorite part right. of a wedding. I'm sorry for all my friends' weddings who I've been to. <laughs> I, I'm happy you're in love. But my favorite part of the wedding is the dessert. The dessert. Yeah, so <laughs> you've got that represented right over here, right? Right, so I'll talk a little bit about the trend of dessert stations, which we've found a kind of special niche in because we don't do wedding cakes as a caterer. Of course, there are wonderful wedding cake providers in town, but a lot of times people will want maybe a smaller cake or they'll want sort of signature cakes and then they want a display around it. Again, this speaks to the people who want to pick their own, you right. know, but sort of a build your own. And so this is one of those represented items, but usually it's a whole table full. It's kind of like a really fun way to kind of create a palette of goodies. So. I'll let Erin talk to what we have here. Um, so these are our moose shots, and most popular, like, will disappear off your dessert station mm -hmm. first. Um, we've got our strawberry, um, orange, and key lime, which this orange tastes like a dream school mm -hmm. for any of you who oh, grew up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and these are also house made by mm -hmm. our baker. Wow. Um, so she makes everything fresh from scratch, um, and it's just it's light and airy and it's everything that you want in a moose shot um, but the really awesome thing about this is that um, they are colorful mm -hmm. and you are okay. able to really um, pair this with the decor mm -hmm. um, one thing that I've noticed as a trend in weddings as of late, because um, I get to work them on site, which is so much fun, yeah. um, is that people are pairing their decor with their menu. They're they're focusing on the fact that they want their menu to tie together right. with their entire decor. Right. Um, so having this clean white with these bold pops of color is something that's really fancy and trendy, and people really do enjoy to, um, you know, bring it all together. Right. Well, I mean, they, they look great, and so, but you could also do like 
Oh, we've got we've got some photos of you. Yeah, we've done right like one is called Dunks and Drizzle, so we make our own little homemade donuts, and we can do you know little things to pair with that. We have a gooey butter cake bar. I mean, you can just make it crazy. We oh, have look, even yeah. our cookies. We have little. Um, you can have little milk shots with it, or you can do. I know fun somebody who would drink. love this donut bar, by yeah. the way. I mean, <laughs> I, I have a friend who just, and my mother too, loves donuts. So yeah, it's a, it is. It's a fun way to get more of that interaction again, and that kind of sense of fun. I love that. Now we were also talking about a trend, which is mm -hmm. what is called what a late night. Well, you can call it late night snack, comfort food bar, and that's a lot of times where, especially. Aaron sees, you see sort of the personality of whoever is throwing the party, even if it's a corporate party or whether it's a wedding, they just want that fun ending. And so I'll let Aaron describe what we have to represent that category. Um, so here we've got our tater tot bar. Um, so we have, you know, obviously yummy, delicious, fatty tater tots <laughs> that you can <laughs> then top with um, either your fresh sides or your you know, hey, calories are free. It's I mean, if you're going tater tots, you yeah. might as well go all in. You don't in. have to right. track this night, you know what I mean? Right. So um, you can top it with whatever you want. Um, if you are lactose intolerant, don't add cheese, add right. pico. Right. It's perfect for all of your guests. Um, and then we also have our chicken and waffle, which um, is one of those things that uh, you can't really go wrong with that. I mean, let's be honest, right. everybody loves chicken and waffles. So um, again, this is something that's fun to pass or um, you can do a station. It's excellent for that bride who um, is, is thinking of her guests and thinking of you know the fact that she wants to have a more traditional menu. However, she wants to let her personality show. Right. So this is the perfect opportunity to do that. I, I do, I love that. And I mean, we've been talking and focusing a lot on weddings, yeah. but you guys also do, we do. corporate events. And right. if I want to have an anniversary party or whatever the party might right. be, it's just, we happen to be in that wedding season right now where everybody's starting to plan kind of those things. And I love the idea of, you know, kind of being able to show your personality mm -hmm. and what it is mm -hmm. that you guys love. Yeah, and I will say even for like talking about those social events or corporate events, oftentimes we'll help people either find their venue and we cater at 30 different venues in St. Louis. So that's really fun and sometimes that kind of helps create the vibe. Yeah. And so corporate especially and even social parties, they, they are getting much more creative as well. And so the food becomes part of the fun. So we'll mm -hmm. do pairings, we'll do beer pairings or wine pairings or even just the food itself and kind of the way that we present it is makes it a really special event. They kind of make it all nice. And we yeah. talked a little bit before you guys came on the show. You can actually work with that person to kind of help kind of bring out what it is that they maybe, you know, like I, if I was planning something and I don't know how to explain, you can be like, well, what do you Absolutely. like? Well, yeah. what about this? And you guys mm -hmm. kind of work with that. Yeah, that's kind of our expertise is from the beginning, we have been very, very personal in how we customize menus with clients. And so, yeah, you call in, we say, what are you looking for? And then they talk to our um, sales team. Um, and basically we help you create whatever it is your dream is. So botanicals or wooden or more modern, we can help you kind of see that vision through. I I love this so much. Well, where can somebody keep in track with you, find out more information? Yeah, so hollyberrycatering.com has all of our menus. It has our contact information. It has more pictures and things like that. So yeah, and then of course we're on social media on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, I actually tagged them on my Instagram earlier, so we definitely do that. What should I try before as oh we my get gosh. ready to leave? You? Okay, what do you think? This? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, I'm trying Absolutely. this. Yeah, I'm going for this. We want to thank you, Holly <laughs> and Erin, for coming and hanging out with us today. And you can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. You can always drop us a line right here at the Daily Mix at STLTV. Net. We want to hear from you. That's going to do it for the Daily Mix. We keep it right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis.